Welcome to In Spades News. We are so excited to introduce to you Lily Frimpon, and today we will be talking about modeling in Toronto. Thank you for being with us, Lily. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having me, by the way. So give us a quick introduction of yourself. Hi, my name is Lily from Pong. Um, I'm 21 years old and I'm a model from Toronto. There is a lot of controversy in the modeling industry, and I'm sure that this pandemic did not help at all. But what is modeling from your point of view? I think being a model is really just like a whole process about like expressing yourself. And I don't think there's like a one size fits all. I feel like every model has like a different purpose, a different journey. Um, but I think one thing we all have in common is that as we, um, I guess, work with different creatives and are able to present ourselves in different opportunities, we really are expressing ourselves and we're doing that through picture and video. Did you have any horrible experiences like the many different ones that every now and then pop online? Um, I would say like my first ever shoot, which was in April of 2019, it wasn't a horrible experience, but it just kind of showed you that like, don't ever expect everything to be done for you. So basically I was shooting for just like a local brand. And when I got there, like I was told there's going to be like a makeup artist, hair person on deck. But when I got there, like they didn't even finish setting up. So like makeup was out of the question. So I just learned to always kind of like prepare myself and always have things ready. I don't think it was a bad experience. I think it was good to be able to learn that, especially from like my initial time with starting a modeling, but it was kind of a surprise, you know, like I was told, you know, I'm going to be having all these people and no one was there, but good thing I had my makeup with me because if I didn't, I honestly don't know what would happen. Well, we know that Murphy's Law is always there ready to ruin your day. There are tricks that can help. I usually advise to test the rented equipment the day before if you are not familiar with it or to ask the studio to have a chance to enter a little bit earlier to start setting up before the arrival of the client and models. Many studios are extremely rigorous on the time and will not allow to enter before the time booked. In this case, the best thing is to book a couple more hours and get there earlier and prepare for the unexpected. Not that this will fix all your problems, but I can assure you that it will help quite a bit. And like, I feel bad when it happens to photographers because I feel like in your position, it kind of makes you look unprofessional, but it's not like you intentionally did it, but it just so happened. And then it just kind of like gives the wrong impression, which is like so frustrating. Did you have any weird or bad experiences on a shoot? Um, like the actual shoot, but I feel like I've had like weird experiences in terms of how people ask to do shoots. So like, for example, like I really list in like on Model Mayhem, like what type of shoots I do. Like I don't like doing like nude shoots or like those type of things. Like I have no, problem with people who do that but personally like I'm not comfortable but then people will still ask for it and they feel like because they're asking in like a kind way that it's gonna like persuade me so I feel like I have more weird experiences with like inquiries but not really at shoots like I never really felt uncomfortable or anything and I think that's also because most of the time my friends are with me or like other models are also there so I always feel like protected what do you feel when you see your photos after the shoot I don't know, it's such a good feeling and I feel like when you see your pictures after, it's kind of like when you get like a good mark on a test, like you, you see all the work you put in and it's like you, like you kind of remember how you felt in that moment. It's like a really good memory and it's just really nice to see like the process even like maybe in the beginning the shots weren't so good but towards the end you see the shots that came out better and it's like you just see your growth as a model and it's really, really nice and like um, motivating. Let's go beyond the Lily the model. What do you think about the Black Lives Matters movement? I get it, people are trying to push Black Lives Matter, but it just feels very performative. Like, even like, just in business, like, you'll go to Uber Eats. I remember like this so well, especially after the whole, whole George Floyd thing, like, oh, 25% off Black businesses. Like, it's just so fake. Like, if you guys really wanted to do this, it would it shouldn't have taken people losing their lives for you to care about black lives it just feels very performative and also like it's always temporary like people will care for a week they'll do all these like protests or like they'll push for diversity in their business and then after that week it's like okay let's go back to normal but that's not real change or progress it has to be like embedded in your system and like embedded in your practices 
when my generation takes over, I feel like a lot of things will change because even um, when you look at like the protests for um, George Floyd, you see so many different races and not saying that like that wasn't the case before, but I feel like my generation is more open-minded and more willing to change the systems like in racism and everything, like even climate change, like we really care about like the world that we're taking over. So I feel like when my generation um, is able to be put in places of power, then that's when change will happen. Moving on to another topic. How do you feel when older generations critique the younger millennials or Generation Z labeling them as lazy or without goals? Okay, I feel like their idea, unfortunately, I feel like it stems from jealousy because especially like, let's say like our parents' generation, they didn't have those options, especially if they were like immigrants. They came here, they had to work in factories or just like jobs they didn't like. They didn't have options or variety. Whereas now, if you're like 30 even, you can literally quit your job or like just start working on your passions. And I feel like because maybe they didn't get to fully um, explore their passions and they see that we can do it, they think we're lazy or that, that like we don't want to work. But there's a lot of ways to make money. It, it doesn't always have to be about um, working a nine to five or like clocking in at an office. There's a lot of ways to make money. And just because it's not the traditional way, it doesn't mean that you're lazy or you're, you don't want to work hard. Older generations tend to have extremely harsh feelings when addressing younger generations. In the modeling world or on social media, Younger generations tend to be more free with their bodies and showing their bodies. What is your opinion? Um, I think a lot of the times too, people are hypocrites because you may be 90 years old now, but I'm sure when you were 20, you did stuff that you weren't proud of or maybe stuff that wasn't conventionally okay. And I just think like, that's just what the older generation like, likes to do. They, act, they like to act like they were never young or they never, you know, did things out of the norm. And I don't really see a problem with um, this type of modeling. I think it's a form of self-expression, just that, just like any other type of modeling and it should be like respected because even if you don't like it, it doesn't concern you. It's somebody else's choice, somebody else's passion. And it shouldn't bother you to the extent that like you start creating negativity. So that's what I think. I mean, I get it. I think it stems from also like there's a lot of younger people on social media now. And like a lot of the times when they're viewing these things, they may be around parents. So in that sense, I understand why um, it's more to protect um, what younger people are viewing, especially like I would say like early teens, um, because a lot of their parents are conservative and don't want to see that. But from like an adult perspective, I don't think there's anything wrong with it and I think it should be respected. The whole social media topic is much more complex and definitely needs some attention and open-mindedness when interacting with it. So we know now that you are knowledgeable on social media. Do you have your own website? And how do you interact with brands that want to connect with you? Yes, I have my own website. I have I had a website for like about two years, but um, I recently updated it. I, I would say a couple months ago. Um, and the link, yeah, the link is right there in my model mayhem. And it's just a place for me to kind of have more about me. So all of, like my information, like height, weight, and then like all my um, pictures categorized based on like headshots and black and white photos. And then also I offer a little promo service on Instagram too. So I link that there and just more of my contacts. So like. Um, if people want to network on a more professional basis, I have my LinkedIn and then also my Instagram as well. If they wanted brand ambassadors, I could act as a brand ambassador and maybe once, twice a week post Instagram stories and then maybe like a few times a month post like actual posts and make sure my caption really like talks about the quality and what I like about the product. I would also tag the brand in my photo or if they would just want like actual prom like promotion maybe like a one-time promotion i would make sure to look at my analytics um and look at when i when um, people are most active on my profile and then i would post about their active wear during that time making sure that i tag the brand in my story or maybe i would make like a reel or a tiktok 
just promoting on the brand and what I like about it. What if the brand that connects with you for a promotion has products that you don't believe are up to par? What would you do? Mm, that's a good question. Okay, if it's a brand where they have multiple products, I would try the other ones out. So maybe if it's like, um, a clothing brand, maybe they wanted me to try out a hoodie, I would maybe try something else, like um, maybe like a tracksuit set or sweatpants. But if it's a one-time product, um, I and especially if they're like a newer brand, I would try to say it in a nice way where maybe I would say, you know, like I see the potential, but right now I don't feel like I really connect with the brand. And maybe I would like do a check-in in a few months because maybe at that point the brand would have um, improved and um, maybe got more variety or um, better quality. And at that point I would try again. So I would kind of give them time to improve um, on their brand. Wow, that is a great answer. Many others would have just let go and not even give a second thought. What are your strategies or secrets to expand your reach? So. First, I would say consistency. This is something I'm working on too. So I know if people are gonna call me out, like I'm also really bad at this, but I would say like, find what type of like niche you wanna follow. So if you like beauty, post a lot of like makeup videos or like hair videos. If you like um, uh, influencing, start like working with little brands, but whatever you do, make sure you're consistent, whether it's on like YouTube, posting videos twice a week or on Instagram posting three, four times a week, make sure you're consistent because it, the other thing too, especially about Instagram and the algorithm, if you post consistently, people are going to remember you because if you only post like once every now and then people like forget about you and it's all, it's already hard for people to see your posts. So if you're always on their page, they're more intrigued to see what you're focused on and like actually click your page and maybe follow you or like your pictures. I would also say just be authentic. I feel like especially nowadays people don't, I don't know, like there's obviously a lot of nice people, but a lot of people just have this sense of entitlement or because Instagram is kind of like a filter that only shows good moments, people think they're better than other people. But if you're just a genuinely like nice person who wants to influence something or change something people will gravitate towards that you have to be like authentic and do it for the right reasons don't do it for money don't do it for fame do it because oh i like i like music i like modeling i like beauty like have a reason as to why you're doing it and make sure the reason is more than just um fame or status we all know that a certain investment needs to be made in order to go a little bit further with our social reach what do you think about instagram ads do you use paid promotions? I think that's a really good um, way to grow, especially if you're looking at your passion as more international, because the good thing about Instagram ads is they give you the option of, I guess, targeting what cities you want to focus on. I remember when I did like a promo, it was more for like Black History Month and I wanted to do like 20% off or something for black businesses, but I wanted to make it more international so more black people would see it so i made sure to put like um cities in africa cities in america just places where i knew like more black people could see it and i would get likes from like random random places or random creatives that lived very far away and you never really know like your impact because maybe someone just liked it but maybe that person ended up telling someone they know like word of mouth is also a really big part of growth so i feel like Instagram ads actually do work and they really, really help, especially for more international reach. What are you presently focused on? What do you have planned for the future? Yeah, so right now, like I'm more focused on modeling, but I've always thought about making my own brand. I just don't like to speak on things that haven't happened yet, but like definitely creating my own brand has been something that I've considered for a long time and I actually want to start taking the steps to do it, but I want to also give myself time to learn how to properly do it. I don't want to rush anything. So I think, especially if you've never started a brand before, you need to take time to learn everything because it's not just about like making an Instagram. There's so many things that go into it. We strongly believe that there is some true power in the communities that we have built and that we continue to nurture within spades. It's a true inspiration to see so many creative people and real interactions around us every day. What do you believe is the real power of social media for you? 
yeah i agree like i feel like it's so nice especially to see like an idea just become a whole movement like that's where i feel like social media is very powerful and if you use it for the right reasons and you're very like intentional and genuine with what you want to do and i like i feel like especially if like your focus is on other people if you're trying to help other people that's when like the most progress is made which is really really um inspiring i could have not said it better and our time is almost up, but we do have a final question. We are on your page lilyfrimpong.ca, and I can see that you are in a video by Roy Woods like Pascal. Tell us a bit more. How did that happen? It was literally like unreal. Like even the way it happened, it was so cool. So basically, um, it was just like a summer night and I was just at home, not really doing much. And that girl in the picture is actually my best friend. Her name is Savannah. Um, and she's also a model, so you guys should check her out. But she basically told me like, oh, like, do you want to be in Roy Woods' music video? And I was like, yeah, of course. And it was like the next day. So I had to like cancel work, like call in sick and everything. And yeah, like we went and it was just, it was so nice. Like everybody was really nice. It was a really like chill vibe and like a condo. And just to have that as like my first music video experience, it really, set the bar for like what I want to do with my career and it really showed me that like anything is possible because if you were to ask me a year ago if I would have thought I would be in that video like it's like impossible like you never you never think it's possible until it happens so it was really really amazing okay so we won't tell your boss that you were not sick and that you were at a shoot and it's great to have you here on in spades I want to thank you for your time and we all wish you the best in your career Thank you guys so much for having me. It was a pleasure and I'm so excited to see what is to come. Well, this is a wrap. Thank you all for being here with us on In Spades. We hope that we deserved your time and we hope to have you on the show. So give us a shout and submit your story.